nonetheless at Warner's Bay today with the wonderful Anton and we're looking at a recliner chair today. Our occupational therapists often uh, prescribe recliner chairs for people living with disabilities or older adults that are struggling with transfers or may have care needs around pressure area care. So can you tell us about the model and some of the key specifications that occupational therapists always love to see? Yeah, absolutely. Well, the, uh, the Chadwick is an exclusive chair to ILS. Um, the probably unique part about the, the Chadwick is that is what we call a quad motor. So there's actually four motors in the chair. So in addition to the standard sit to stand feature that most common chairs have, it additionally has the lumbar. So there's a motor behind the lumbar and also the headrest. Uh, so it's a four motor chair enabling some really nice positioning, obviously full comfort, um, infinite recline, um, and it's quite handy for some people that have specific positions that they need their head to be in when they're, you know, if they've had some kind of surgery in the neck and need to have a particular support for that head, which you can't traditionally provide in a normal waterfall backrest or having to remove the need of an additional cushion to stuff down the back. So that ability to build out the lumbar and build out the headrest by the use of a motor, as opposed to additional cushions, yep. which obviously can so have issues. Maybe some things for people watching to understand that may not be as familiar with recliners. There's uh, often recliners can have lots of different motors. So some are single motor, some are dual motor, Correct, but yeah. some are more than that. That's right, yeah. Um, and really nice is that it comes in both fabric and leather as well, so you can have that uh, element of you know a nice in-home chair, although it's got some cool clinical benefits, it's also, you know, fits in, in, in the yeah. lounge room. Yeah. Um, it's got even just a handy USB charger in there. <laughs> right. So, um, yeah, really just thinking about it, all the all the parts that make yeah. a, a nice nice recliner chair. So there's some the, things you know, that I think of clinically there in terms of motor, knowing that lots of different uh, pieces of the recliner can move, so it can really help people with postural support, like you're saying there. Um, around fabric choice, there are sometimes choices of uh, fabric or leather or the material of a recliner that we consider if someone's living with uh, continence concerns. So that, and then we may think about overlays as well. The USB function there, although it's you know quite funny to talk about, it, it can still have really good input for people as well. Somebody may have um, like a screen reader or a vision reader that needs to be charged mm. and. That could be a really beneficial feature for someone to keep a piece, another piece of assistive technology charged. One thing I always think about with recliners as well, if somebody's living with a cognitive impairment, having multiple motors and multiple different options can lead someone to be really struggle with their transfer. Which button do I push? And you can have a challenging moment where the chair's sort of moving in different pieces um, but that person's not getting a key lift. So clinically, there's sometimes a balance there of going, we want postural support, but if we have too many motors, uh, it takes away, it gives someone too many options to choose from. So cognitive assessment is often an important piece there to watch for uh, how you're prescribing motors as well. Yeah, yeah. exactly right, spot yeah. on there. It is probably the, the trickiest thing to negotiate uh, when looking at the, the right chair. Um, particularly looking at a quad motor chair is, is firstly how how cognitive are they yeah. um, and are they going to be able to navigate yeah. um, and not put themselves in a in the folding yeah. pretzel position. Um, and clinically once we get all of those things right we sort of then have the fun at the end of like great let's pick a great colour because you, you certainly don't want to get that interior design wrong as well. So that does lead to um, you know improvements in mental health as well. If you've got a lovely space that you're really comfortable in a lot of people that would be prescribed a recliner will spend a lot of time in that in their living space as well so they want that to look nice so if you've got a color tone that's say in this color tone at home well that would be fantastic but if all of a sudden someone prescribed you a yellow recliner i don't think you'd be very happy with that even if it was the correct recliner for correct. you yeah. and i'm I would be terrible for that to offer advice because I'm colour blind. So <laughs> really? I didn't know that. I really oh, yeah. So don't ask me what colour that is. It's, sure. I it's really a great would struggle. <laughs> I would really struggle. Anything to close on with um, this model? Not really. The, the the size of it is kind of a nice 
compatible size that um, for the majority of clients should be able to work. And because you've got those um, motors to adjust the position, um, you can kind of move away from some of the issues that we might find with specific heights because yeah. we can adjust that headrest position and get the support in the right areas. Um, safe working load of 150, um, so relatively robust as well. Obviously, the four motors providing it um, with some, some really good support from a safe working load um, perspective. Um, that's probably about it, really. Wonderful. Yeah, nice thanks, so, thanks so much for your time. We'll see you in another video soon.